man of beauty and cruel trust. A gone thrilling wilderness. Rainy season and drought collide in an everlasting cycle. One of the most fertile places on the planet. Containing 10% of all animal species on Earth. Living in nature is always a struggle for existence. But these days, wildlife has to fight to survive in the face of habitat destruction and the spread of human influence. Thailand is known for its dazzling megacity, Bangkok. Its exquisite cuisine. Saffron-dressed monks. Exotic beaches. And a world-famous nightlife. Hardly anyone knows the hidden treasure and almost secret life of this old Asian culture, bordering Cambodia, Laos, Malaysia, and Myanmar. With year-round temperatures in the 30s, Thailand is one of the warmest countries on Earth, cooled only by rain in the rainy season. Ancient rainforests thrive under these conditions, as does one of its most enigmatic inhabitants, the great hornbill. Great fruit eaters and great predators, hornbills are amongst the largest and strongest birds in the forest community. No less than 13 different species of hornbills live in the forests of Thailand. One of these is the helmeted. Another one is the white crown. This is the brown hornbill. The rufous-necked hornbill. The smallest of them all, the oriental pied hornbills, live primarily on various species of figs that fruit throughout the year in the forest canopy. In many cases, the growing roots of the fig tree encircle the trunk of a host tree and finally kill it. Figs are very healthy for the hornbills as well as other birds and animals. Yet, it is known as the strangler fig, a parasite. The only occasional threat to what could be looked upon as a life in paradise is the binturong, also known as the Asian bear cat. Although mostly looking for fruit, it is also keen on eggs and small birds. It is easy to escape the predator. The bear cat has lost its chance. Figs will have to do. Peace is again restored to the forest canopy. Nothing better than a nap in the trees after a meal. Only 26% of Thailand remains covered by forest, reduced from 60% just 50 years ago. In the darker undergrowth, restricted in many areas by poor penetration of sunlight, strange and rare parasitic plants can be seen.
not to mention a poorly known and recently discovered tree with leaves that turn a flaming red once a year, almost luminescent on the green tapestry background. Tropical forest is characterized by high rainfall. Around half of all animal and plant species call the rainforest home. Seasons change between rain and almost unbearable heat and drought. So does the landscape. Endless tropical rainforests. Dramatic cliff-ridden mountains. Fertile landscapes dotted with trees. It's a busy time for mature hornbill males. The end of the monsoon season. He's looking for a suitable partner above the forest canopy. The lack of underwing covert feathers allows air to pass through the flight feathers and causes the sound of a moving locomotive. The courtship begins mid-air. As any gentleman would do on his first date, the male brings a gift for his intended. A fig, naturally. Convincing a female is not an easy task. It can take many days and nights. But these days they are not alone. Once a year, hornbills gather into large groups for a few days to socialize and look for partners. There can be hundreds, sometimes thousands of individuals. The male has to repeat a series of courtship displays many times during these highly stressful days. He rubs bills with the female, plays, touches her, even kisses her, or at least so it seems. she can feel his passion. She finally accepts his courtship, reluctantly, still playing hard to get. New gifts are exchanged. A male hornbill keeps up to 20 figs in his crop and may regurgitate them whenever needed.
On the edge of the rainforest, another landscape shows its splendor. Grassland dotted with trees covers the land. Here, we find a herd of the largest land mammals on the planet. The wild elephant. A symbol of wisdom in Asian culture and famed for its memory and intelligence. Today, there are only about 1,500 wild elephants in the country. The Asian elephant is highly intelligent and self-aware. It is capable of a range of emotions, including joy, playfulness, grief, and mourning. They spend up to 16 hours a day eating plants and consume up to 300 kilograms of food each day to survive. Elephants live in peace with the Asian ox, the gaur. One ton of pure muscle on the hoof, strong and massively built. Gaua live in small herds of eight to 11 individuals, one of which is a mature bull. More males may join the herd for mating and individual bulls may move from herd to herd, each mating with several other cows. Elephants love water. Besides drinking it, it keeps them cool. A male elephant on the other side of the small swamp is in must, a sexually aggressive period among elephant bulls. During this time, he may try to kill anybody or anything in his way. After the water, the elephants throw dust and dirt on themselves to protect their skin from the sun and create a layer of protection from insects. The male in must is showing aggressive behavior and the females form a protecting circle around their young. Even though the male decides to retreat, at least for now, the elephant herd and their young seek shelter in the forest. Further down the swamp, the sambar deer live in small herds of four to six individuals. One male, the stag, an adult female, and her recent young. Sometimes a stag will dig his antlers in urine-soaked soil and then rub them against trees as a way to mark his territory. He will mark himself by spraying urine into his own face with a highly mobile penis. Sambars live in peace with most of the other species congregating near the swamp. However, there are enemies. The most dangerous predators of the sambar are tigers, leopards, and doles, the Asian wild dog. The stag gathers his herd on a small island in the middle of the swamp. He prefers to defend his herd or attack predators in shallow water. When defending the herd, the stag stamps his feet and makes a ringing call that makes the dogs nervous and warns the other members of the herd of danger.
tries to lure the predators away from his herd. The wild dogs may attack in groups, but for some reason they retreat. It might just be too hot for them. Or perhaps they're not hungry enough to make the effort and decide to wait for another chance. It's mating time. During the 24 hours when the female is in season, the male will approach her from behind before mating. Sambars have extremely sensitive senses of hearing and smell. They are highly developed, which helps them detect predators and challengers. Another male has arrived on the scene, a rival. Sizing each other up, the two stags move into position for an unavoidable fight for dominance. When sparring with rival males, the competing sambars lock antlers, trying to push each other away. seem inspired by the fight nearby. The contest of strength has only one winner and one loser. The heat and humidity triggers a dramatic change in the weather. Thunder in the distance. The monsoon rain feeds the tropical flora and fauna. But even rain doesn't seem to halt the Sambar's battle. And yet, in the end, the intruder admits defeat. dominant stag resumes his courtship. The intruder must wait for another chance. It takes a hot sun to burn away the clouds after the rain. Everything is back to normal at the swamp. However, something is missing, or perhaps somebody. The wild dogs have succeeded in overpowering a young sambar and are now busy ripping the flesh out of its young body.
the Sambar stag can do nothing but observe. In a hidden corner of the remote area, a strange and rarely seen construction emerges. A shallow cave with characters and drawings. Like old French cave art. But this is an elephant construction. Trunk made, not hand made. The elephants have dug a huge hole in the ground in search of salt an important dietary supplement that apparently they are not able to find elsewhere. For years, these incredible mammals have excavated this hole into an impressive cave. Every night they come in, nervous and unprotected from attacks. Mining the cave for its life-giving salt. Seems like a popular venue for elephants. largest freshwater lake in central Thailand. It covers an area of 224 square kilometers. The combination of reed beds, lotus swamps, grassland and fringing woodland make this a great birding spectacle at any time of the year. A frequent sight here is the pheasant-tailed jacana, known as the water pheasant. This mystery bird is unique in the sense that it is the only member of its genus. Another bird to be seen here is the pied kingfisher, waiting to catch its favorite meal, a fish. This is the purple swamp hen also called the sultana bird, famed for its very loud, explosive call. Pheasant-tailed jacanas are polyandrous, with females having up to four mates at one time. They mate from March to September, with each male building a nest made of floating vegetation. After mating, time for a little cleaning. The tropical rainforest is home to a wide range of trees. 
Like abstract objects of art, they reach majestically for the sky. There is a lot of life in the rainforest canopy. Big and noisy life. Although the gibbon is not a monkey, it certainly looks like one. It is a primate member of the ape family, cousin of gorilla, chimpanzee, orangutan, and human. But this is a real monkey, a macaque. One of the five species of macaques in Thailand. Apart from humans, the macaques are the most widespread primate genus in the world. A stump-tailed macaque, known for its pink or red face and yellowish babies. For a curious baby stump-tailed macaque, grass is always greener on the other side of the hill. The Assamese macaque, a highly social species, spends a lot of time on personal hygiene, helping each other find lice and insects and other goodies. The dusky langur, newborns with their bright yellow-orange fur, which will change to grey when they are three months old. The mangrove swamp on the tropical coastline is home to another of Thailand's macaques, the long-tailed macaque. It is called the crab-eating macaque because it is sometimes found foraging along beaches for crabs. Lately, it has also become a scyanthrope, living off human resources. Many ways of crossing a river. Some macaques just jump right into it. Some need to measure the temperature before taking the big leap. While this female, a mother, seems to wait like the captain of a ship. The macaques feed on fruit grass, roots, or bark. Because of their anatomical closeness to humans, the rhesus macaque has been the prime choice for conducting research on human and animal-related products. This would include the development of the smallpox, polio, and rabies vaccines, and the creation of drugs to manage HIV. The adults are good at jumping, but for this youngster, it comes naturally too. Just like for human gymnasts, the asymmetric bar takes practice. Both female and male macaques are promiscuous, mating multiple times with multiple partners.
the Assamese macaque usually prefers living at high altitudes, normally about 500 meters. Fruit eaters, like most macaques, they live in multi-male, multi-female groups of 10 to 50 individuals. Their behavior consists of foraging and social interaction, along with grooming and sleeping. However, as a female will mate with an average of four males a season, she often risks the wrath of the alpha male. Peace is soon restored, and life goes on as though nothing has happened. Until next time. When seen in water, macaques are usually escaping from danger, regulating their body temperature, playing, or searching for food like algae, occasionally small insects, or fish. After five long days of courtship, the female hornbill finally permits the male to mate with her. She inspects the nest the male has selected for her. It seems to be acceptable, but she's already starting to redecorate. From now on, the male becomes fully responsible for feeding, maintaining and protecting his mate and coming chicks. He feeds her by regurgitating food items one at a time. Another duty. Clay and mud is collected. The female uses the clay to seal the nest entrance, preventing predators from attacking and eating the eggs or chicks in the future. The gender roles of the pheasant tail jacanas are reversed, with females defending three or more males. The eggs are left with the males for incubation and parental care. The female defends the nesting territory.
The female great hornbill has now spent 35 days incubating her two eggs. The male is constantly searching for more food for his partner and coming chicks. This is father care. Two small hornbill chicks see the light of day, a miracle in the tropical forest. As the chicks grow, their dietary requirements change and they need more protein than figs can provide. The female refuses what the male has brought. He must let the figs fall to the ground and regurgitate something more appropriate for a growing bird, like an insect. takes three months for the chicks to mature. The proud father supervises the growing life at the nest with tender care. Another miracle at Bang Porapet. Two chicks have already left their eggs. The third is still fighting to escape the shell. shell is removed so that predators are not attracted to the nest by smell. Amazingly, the young are able to run, swim and dive as soon as they have hatched. But sometimes the confrontation with the real world is too much for a newborn pheasant-tailed jacana chick. Chicks may remain with the male for up to two months after hatching. The northern part of Thailand is characterized by mountains and steep cliffs. Doi Changdao, one of the highest peaks in the country, with dramatic cliff-ridden mountains as high as 2,000 meters. In this hostile environment of rugged, rocky terrain, the long-tailed goral is one of the few species that can survive the harsh landscape and cold temperatures. Like ballet dancers, they jump elegantly from one cliff to another. The goral eats a wide range of plant material, grass, herbs, and tree leaves. They typically live in small groups of four to 12 individuals. Mating time is November and December and the mother will give birth to only one foal at a time. The goral has very few natural enemies because their habitat is so inhospitable to most other animals. Testing each other out is usually more a game than a threat.
The female hornbill and one of the chicks has now left the hole in the tree, leaving the other behind. The view and the distance from the tree to the ground must seem terrifying. The chick hesitates. Perhaps it is dazzled by the green world outside. The female attempts to lure it out with a fig in her mouth. The ceiling of the nest entrance makes it difficult for the chick to press itself out. The fight might take hours, even days. Watching their offspring struggling is like a kind of labor pain for the parents. And then the chick falls, like an airplane in distress. The first encounter with the real and unknown, but instinctively familiar world. Finally, the young hornbill is airborne. Although the landing seems a little bit out of control. The male continues to stay as close to his offspring as he can. rain starts pouring down, like a harsh welcome to the real world. The inhabitants of the tropical forest always welcome the rain. At least, most of them. Hornbill chicks stay under the parents' care for up to six months or until the beginning of the following breeding season. As always, when the rain stops, there is a delightful coolness and freshness in the air, like a new beginning in the tropical rainforest, a new morning. is created. Individuals are born. Another generation takes over. Species have taken billions of years to form. Hopefully, we will let them stay a little longer. A land of beauty and incredible contrasts. A forgotten and rarely seen wilderness. Rainy season and drought collide in an everlasting cycle. One of the most fertile places on the planet. Containing 10% of all animal species on Earth.
Living in nature is always a struggle for existence. But these days, wildlife has to fight to survive in the face of habitat destruction and the spread of human influence. Thailand is known for its dazzling megacity, Bangkok. Its exquisite cuisine. Saffron-dressed monks. Exotic beaches and a world-famous nightlife. Hardly anyone knows the hidden treasure and almost secret life of this old Asian culture, bordering Cambodia, Laos, Malaysia, and Myanmar. Thailand's warm climate and plentiful rainfall foster the growth of thick rainforests with abundant life. Animals are concentrated in the forested parts of the country, with 282 different mammal species and 925 bird species. This wealth makes Thailand a hotbed of biodiversity. Central Thailand is a natural, self-contained basin, often termed the rice bowl of Asia. Carved and nourished by four rivers that flow south from the northern hills before merging into the sea. It is a flat and fertile floodplain. The most conspicuous features of the country's terrain are the dramatic cliff-ridden mountains. They cover most of the northern country and extend along the Myanmar border on the west. In this hostile environment of rugged, rocky terrain, the cool temperature encourages the growth of flowers and ferns. Thailand is home to 10% of the world's flowering plants, with more than 27,000 different species, some of which survive and bloom in this harsh landscape. Their names read like poetry, parrot flower. Water lily, Chinese rose. But as poetic and beautiful as the flowers may be, they need help to survive. Birds, along with butterflies, bees and other insects, play an important role in helping flowers to reproduce. The birds search for food, shelter and nesting material. In turn, they carry the pollen from one flower to another, helping to pollinate the plants. The rainforest is full of life, noisy life. Each morning upon awakening, the Gibbon family announces its presence using their territorial hooting call that can be heard several kilometers away. intruding gibbons and other animals to stay out of their territory. Although gibbons are the smallest of the ape species, member of the primates, cousin to the gorilla, chimpanzee, orangutan, and ourselves, they are kings and queens of the forest canopy.
Gibbons are omnivorous, eating a variety of foods. They forage during the day, eating figs, a variety of fruits, leaves and flowers. But the white-handed gibbon is particularly fructiferous, and its presence in a forest is a good indication of a plentiful supply of fruiting trees. In a forest glade, another mammal is looking for food, the black bear. The gibbons are curious and attentive, not too cautious. To be on the safe side, the brownish furred female seeks comfort with her chosen black-furred male. The black bear will climb to rest, sleep, eat or lure enemies, but is much too slow for the gibbons. The masters of the canopy. Whether walking on their feet on the tops of the branches or swinging from one branch to another, in a form of locomotion known as brachiating. Luckily, there is honey, left over from the day before. Bears aren't choosy and will eat a wide variety of foods. Peace is soon restored to the forest canopy. Black bear is active during night time. But what do Asian black bears actually do at night? This is their secret. After a night with a lot of dancing, digging, scratching and stretching, time for a well-deserved nap. The tropical forest is characterized by high rainfall, a minimum of 200 centimeters annually. Around 50% of all biotic species are indigenous to the rainforest. Where there is rain, there are waterfalls. Where there are waterfalls, there are rivers. Where there are rivers, there is life. Big life. Banteng wild cattle quenching their thirst in the river. A crocodile pretends it's asleep, just waiting for the next bite. A Sambar deer family, the stag monitoring the young, locking antlers. The rarely seen and endangered tiger looking for prey. Elephants cooling down their body temperatures. Wild pigs teaching their offspring to cross a river. The Asian wild water buffalo 
weighing up to 1,000 kilograms, a ton, like a medium-sized calf, a challenge to any predator. In the darker undergrowth of the rainforest, restricted in many areas by poor penetration of sunlight, another kind of life is found, small life. Like these shrimps looking for mating grounds. A myriad of insects, ants, larvae, microorganisms, and beetles. Many still unnamed and thousands probably undiscovered. This is an alien world on the forest floor. Being a beautiful butterfly has its price. It's a titbit for the collared falconet. Brutally, it removes the head, eats it, and throws the wings back into the air. Individuals are born, hunted, killed, and eaten in an everlasting cycle of life and death. Dragonflies come in varied colors and shapes. Their bodies often blue, green, or purple. Their wings seem to shimmer as if made of transparent silver. Each of their two eyes are made up of 20 to 25,000 tinier eyes allowing them to zero in on the flying insects that are their daily meals. The position during mating, known as a wheel formation, is unique to insects. The female may lay up to 100,000 eggs at a time in or near water. After about two weeks, the eggs hatch and an immature dragonfly, a nymph, emerges. Once hatched, the nymph spends its time hunting and eating small fish or even members of its own family. It takes six months to seven years for a dragonfly nymph to mature. When it's ready to metamorphose into an adult, it climbs out of water and up a plant to shed its final nymphal skin. Long before the dinosaurs walked the earth 300 million years ago, dragonflies took to the air. And now, after years in the water, yet another beautiful dragonfly is born. It will feed and mate and then it will die. The archer fish. By squirting drops of water from its specialized mouth, the fish can knock down insects sitting on overhanging vegetation. They are able to hit their prey at distances of up to about two meters Mapa cast formation, a group of deep limestone caves. It's like a vampire's castle, home to strange underworld formations and rare, mysterious cave dwellers, like bats searching for evening prey. And the waterfall climbing cave fish a sensation and still a mystery. This is the only place in the world 
where one can get a glimpse of these blind fish with fins almost like feet that allow them to climb up ledges. They have no eyes and their bodies lack all pigmentation. Pink and white, slightly translucent, like ghosts. This is about as close as one can get to aliens on Earth. Another day in the forest canopy. Gibbons live in small monogamous families composed of a mated pair and up to four offspring. They mate for life, unlike most of the great apes. Since they are vulnerable to predators on the forest floor, they spend most of their lives in trees. They drink rainwater from tree holes, often by dipping a hand into the water and then slurping it up from their fur. There is no breeding season. Gibbons may copulate any day, and the female will come into estrus at any time of the year. Gibbon families form tremendously strong and emotional bonds with each other. A poignant picture of motherhood. Dusky Langer is another canopy dweller. Like Gibbons, the Langers spend most of their time in trees. They fear water and will cross no body of it, river, lake or swamp. Normally, the Dusky Langer gives birth to a single offspring. Very rarely, too, like this female, mother of two babies. A pair of twins waddling and jumping around. Annoying and adorable. When daylight starts to shimmer away, a giant shadow of doom from the underworld fills the sky. Clouds of thousands upon thousands of bats emerge from the caves to feed on small insects. When the night shift begins, Different species take over. A night owl, various tree frogs, a civet, or as it is also called, a toddy cat, a snake, the peninsula pit viper. Forests are home to many kinds of colorful birds. The red-breasted parakeets.
a green magpie. Whiskered tree swift. Chinese pond heron and a fish eagle. A white-throated kingfisher. Blue magpie. Plain prinia. Superstar of Bung Poropet Lake, the pied kingfisher. This boldly patterned black and white plumaged bird may watch for prey from a perch, as many other kingfisher species do. Then they dive into the water, creating a shower, reappearing with its stabbed prey in its bill. Often, the pied may hover mid-air for up to a minute, taking its time to locate the perfect meal. The pied kingfisher is the largest bird capable of a true hover. Back on its perch, it tosses the fish into the air, catches it deftly, and makes sure to swallow it head first. Birds have four primary needs food, water, shelter, and a place to raise a family. Almost like human beings. Like humans, they also design and build complicated individual constructions, homes for their intended and coming offspring. The black and red broadbill collects material for a bulky, untidy ball nest hanging from the tip of a branch. The hornbill seeks out a suitable cavity in a tree and uses clay and mud to seal it from predators. The Asian open bill stalk builds a rough platform of sticks, often on half submerged trees. The great yellow nape uses its beak to create larger holes for its nests. Baya weavers are known for their elaborately woven pendulous nests. These are created with a central nesting chamber. The highly complicated construction is made with long strips of paddy leaves, rough grasses and strips torn from palm fronds. The olive-backed sunbird builds a hanging flask-shaped nest with an overhanging porch at the entrance. The outside is often untidy and decorated with dead leaves and seed cases. Unlike the home of its cousin, the Bayer weaver, the nest of the Asian golden weaver is a messy structure. Once constructions are built and the chicks have hatched, a frenzied feeding begins. Endless days and nights finding prey for apparent infinite open and thankless mouths. Feeding the usual range of food, such as invertebrates, small animals, and fruit. The blue-bearded bee-eater, nesting in deep tunnels of mud, feeding their chicks, bees, and insects.
it's not always easy to keep a nest clean. Small ants have swarmed from nowhere, causing itching and discomfort. The female blue-winged pitta calls for a helping hand, or beak. The male helps clean up by removing a sticky substance from the offspring's bottoms. This remote Buddhist temple is home to a group of the largest bats in the world, the flying fox. They camp in big trees. There are hundreds, sometimes even thousands. During the day, they hang out by roosting in trees, wings wrapped around their body, squabbling noisily and fanning themselves when hot. Favoured roost sites are used for many years and the trees become stripped of bark and foliage by the bat's sharp claws that help them cling to branches. Flying foxes are social animals, roosting together in the tops of trees, mostly hanging upside down because this is more energy efficient. During the day, they spend hours on personal hygiene, licking and scratching themselves endlessly. It is likely that communal living comes at the cost of living among large numbers of external parasites. The temple camp is a base from which flying foxes make their day and nighttime foraging trips. When rain falls, they draw closer together in their camp, using their wings as umbrellas. A flying fox penetrating the sky like a vampire from a gothic novel. This is an underwater tropical forest, the Andaman Sea. Coral reefs, a true natural treasure. One quarter of the world's coral reefs lie in Southeast Asian waters. Each forms a complete ecosystem, the oldest and most productive ecosystems on Earth. Andaman Sea is home to the most diverse collection of marine life in the world. 
like this spotless firefish. A black-spotted toadfish. The painted flute mouth or trumpet fish. It lives on the sea floor, close to plants or corals, for protection and shelter. A jellyfish. One of the most venomous ocean creatures, with stings that might kill a human within minutes. But to the smallest fish in the sea, it forms a vibrating, protecting shield against outside predators. Another highly deadly species, the sea crate. The hawksbill turtle. While being omnivorous, it feeds on algae, sea anemones, and dangerous jellyfish but different species of sea sponges are the principal food. At times, the appearance of water species may look weird. Sometimes, just small. Often, extraordinary. Like this octopus. An octopus has eight arms, which trail behind it as it swims. It has three hearts. Two for pumping blood to each of the gills, and a third for pumping blood to the entire body. For defense against predators, it uses color-changing camouflage. Within a second, it adjusts its colors. Green, red, brown. Or even a mixture of colors until the background is matched. The whale shark is a graceful, slow-moving giant and the biggest fish in the world. The largest confirmed individual had a length of approximately 13 meters and a weight of more than 22 tons. Its mouth is large enough to fit a human inside, but luckily it is a harmless filter feeder that eats only plankton and small fish. Above the sea, and not necessarily far away from tourist areas, a variety of seabirds can be seen. The great egret. Wood sandpiper. Black-winged stilts. Grey heron. And a large group of Brahmini kites looking for prey in the salty water. Kites are often scavengers, foraging both over water and land, feeding on dead fish and crabs. But occasionally, they hunt live prey, such as hares or bats. When fishing, they don't dive. Prey on the water surface is snatched with their talons.
At the intersection of land and sea, mangrove forests support a wealth of life and may be more important to the health of the planet than we previously realized. Mangroves provide nursery grounds for a wide range of microbes, invertebrates, and crabs. An alien world of remarkable creatures fighting to survive. The mangrove swamp ecosystem feeds fish and shrimps, wading birds, and the long-tailed macaque, or crab-eating macaque. Although the macaque feeds on crabs, it is also known to eat almost 200 different types of plants and fruits, helping the forest to regenerate and keep its fragile balance. The macaque knows exactly where to look for prey. Sometimes it even cleans off the mud before eating. The youngster seems to have invented its own fitness machine. Another youngster wants to join in. The inevitable fight that follows is quickly resolved by the alpha male. Long-tailed macaques are social animals. They live in groups of 15 to 30 individuals. The female gives birth to only one infant at a time. Their social structure and behavior are almost as complex as humans. Each group, the troop, is made up of a dominant alpha male, his harem of female monkeys and their babies. Being strongly territorial, the gibbon family defend its boundaries, warding off fellow gibbons with vigorous visual and vocal displays. A male gibbon competitor has penetrated the alpha male territory in search of food. The alpha male not only protecting his territory, but also his mate and newborn baby frightens the intruder, chasing it away from his family's feeding grounds. Meanwhile, a female intruder sees a chance of getting a piece of the cake. Returning from his chase, the alpha male immediately goes after the new intruder. Another predator is climbing the fruitful fig trees, a binturong. Cautiously, the female gibbon tries to lure this Asian bear cat away. It is too big a handful for her, so she leaves this job to her mate.
The male gibbon and the bear cat challenge each other's patience. Finally, the gibbon male decides to retreat, out of reach of the bear cat, only to scare away yet another intruder, the great hornbill. Busy day, time for some family reunion in the forest canopy. But for some, freedom is a luxury. Extinction is widespread and rapidly depleting the rich tapestry and treasures of life on Earth. One hundred and forty thousand species per year are at risk. Once the biodiversity of our planet is lost, it can never be brought back again. As on other continents, Asian wildlife is depleted by illegal hunting and trading. In this marketplace, people have gathered to sell exotic birds, illegally captured in the rainforest, sold for the highest bid, and here, participating in a bird singing competition. Deer. The strange underwater octopus. Butterflies. Gibbons. Jacana chicks. And the largest animal on Earth, the elephant. These species, and many more, have taken billions of years to form. Hopefully, we will let them stay a little longer in this fragile and remote world. The blue, white and green gem in the solar system. Our planet, our one and only home, the Earth. <laughs>